Are you looking for a travel trailer with a multifunctional Murphy bed? Well, stick around, folks. We found some awesome floor plans of travel trailers with Murphy beds. Hey everybody, this is Mike with RV Blogger in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell when you do so that every week you'll be notified when we release a brand new video. And we also invite you to check out our website at rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing there as well. But without any further ado, let's get started on our review of awesome travel trailers with Murphy Beds. This travel trailer is the Forest River R-Pod, model number RP192. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,059 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,258 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,317 pounds. The hitch weight is 447 pounds. It measures in at 22 feet, two inches, and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you have a multifunctional Murphy bed and sofa. Then it wraps on around into the kitchen area and behind me here in the back of the trailer is where the bathroom is located. Now, when you first walk into this travel trailer, it feels like a very light modern feel in here. And also you'll notice that it's very multifunctional. I mean, I love the fact that it's got a nice comfy couch here with a Murphy bed included because you don't use your bed all day, so you might as well have it set up as a couch for part of the day at least, and it makes the best use of the space. Now, the Murphy bed itself is super easy to, to put down. You just jackknife your sofa, pull this little clip, and this pops right down, and then you grab your mattress and pull it forward. And there you go, you've got your bed all set up. So let's go ahead and measure the bed in here. Now this bed measures up at, ooh, it's 80 inches long, which is a good sign, 60 inches wide. So you've got a residential queen size bed in here, which is a really nice feature to have. In addition to that, it's got a nice big window in the front that opens up so you can get a breeze blowing through here. And there's a cubby on each side at the head of the bed so you can store away more of your items there. Now on each side of the bed and the sofa, there's a wardrobe cabinet that's lighted up. There's a little switch right here. When you open it up, you can see inside and there's a bar up top so you can hang all of your garments in there. Just below the wardrobe cabinet on each side of the bed, there is a receptacle and two USB outlets so you can charge all of your electronics up. And then finally, below each of the end tables, there's additional storage below them as well. And finally, there's even more storage underneath of the sofa, and it has this nice black cargo netting that holds everything in place for you. Just inside the entry door on my left and underneath the dinette booth is a little shoe storage area and a little cargo net for more storage. Now the kitchen area in here is what we would consider an inline kitchen. All of your appliances are in a line. Up top here, you've got a couple of really nice cabinet doors with the glass inlay and a very big cabinet space above. Then you have your two burner cooktop here. And uh, I think I would really prefer to see a, a skinnier two burner and a front to back setup to give you a little bit more countertop space here. But if you close the lid on your cooktop, you do gain some countertop space that way. Also, it's got a very nice size, deep round single bowl sink with a gooseneck faucet overhead. And this also comes with a dish drain style cover, which can also give you more countertop space. Now there is a receptacle located on the side of the cabinetry. So if you have a coffee pot or toaster, you can set that up and plug it in. As we wrap on around, there's some good storage underneath of the kitchen sink area. And then we have a convection microwave oven down below. Now, just past the cooktop in the microwave is where the refrigerator is located. And this style of refrigerator is one of the older absorption style fridges. Now, these run off of propane or shore power. And, you know, they do, uh, while they do cost less money, they're a little less expensive, they do have their drawbacks as well. One of them is they take a long time to get cold. 
And if you're traveling, you might want to turn your propane off while you're driving up and down the road. These do not run on battery power though. So your fridge has to stay closed while you're traveling, acting more like a cooler than a fridge until you get to a spot where you can either turn back on the propane or get plugged into shore power. Now down below the refrigerator, they have a central vac plugged in or set up here. So you can sweep up all in here and then just whisk it away into your central vac central back and then right next to the refrigerator there's a mirrored cabinet here which could serve as a linen closet for your bathroom or it could be the pantry for your kitchen now just across from the kitchen area is where the dinette is located and this dinette is perfect for two people uh, as you can see it's got a nice large window here it does have some lights above that you can turn on and off individually for extra light here just above that we have more really nice cabinets with lots and lots of storage overhead and then they went ahead and they put the tv location here as well which works well for the couch and the bed location works great for one person sitting at the dinette but if a second person's here they're going to block the view a lot of people don't watch tv very much when they go camping anyway but all in all it's a decent spot to have your TV set up. Now, there's also storage underneath each of the dinette benches. It's hard to get to though. You have to remove all the cushions to be able to lift the piece of plywood up to get to that storage. And unfortunately, they didn't drill any finger holes in the plywood, so it's kind of hard to lift them up. If it was me, I would just get a, a hole saw or you know a, a, you know a bigger bit saw, drill a finger hole in each one of them, and then you can easily lift the plywood to access that storage area. Now this table will also drop down and the dinette will convert into another bed. And if you do that, you would end up with about six feet by 30 inches of sleeping space. So an average size adult or a child could easily sleep in this location. So here I am inside the bathroom, which is the width of the entire trailer back here. So it's a decent sized bathroom. I'm standing in the shower and uh, as you guys know, I'm 5'11", but in the skylight area, let's see how much headroom you have. You have about six feet, three inches of headroom in here. In the entire camper itself, you have about, I would say, what is that? Six feet, six inches of height throughout the entire camper. So decent amount of headroom everywhere. Now this shower is, doesn't have a surround built in. So it's a very basic type shower. Uh, there are no, you know, places to put your soap or your shampoo in here either. And finally it comes with a shower curtain. And if you've seen any of our other videos, you know, I hate shower curtains. They blow in on you while you're taking a shower hard to keep them clean. They're wet. They drip on the floor. Uh, it would be so easy just to install a retractable shower door in here. They cost less than a hundred bucks. Easy peasy. You could do it yourself. Uh, and then you'd have a much nicer and more convenient shower set up in here. Just outside of the shower, you'll notice that you have a single vanity with storage down below. And then on the other side of the bathroom, you have a rather large storage cabinet here. They kind of wasted the space above it because it's open for, I guess you could put things up there while you're camping, but while you're traveling down the road, I don't really think you can use this for any storage at all. Now, finally, when I'm sitting on the commode in here, I can pass the elbow test on my left, but I will not pass it on the right. At the very front of this camper, underneath of the Murphy bed, we have open storage from side to side. This travel trailer is the Forest River No Boundaries or Nobo model number 19.3. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,625 pounds, a very impressive cargo carry capacity of 3,043 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 7,668 pounds. It has a hitch weight of 668 pounds. It measures in at 24 feet, eight inches long, and it can sleep up to seven people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you've got your sofa and Murphy bed set up. As you wrap on around, you've got your kitchen and dinette location. On my left hand side is where the bathroom's located and on my right are the bunk beds. Now, when you first walk into this travel trailer, the first thing that I, the first impression that I get is that it's small, but very efficient and somewhat multifunctional. 
Now, one thing to note in here is that there are no slide outs either. So that's one less thing that can break and certainly one less thing that you'd have to maintain over time. The trade-off for that though is you don't get as much floor space and your dinette might feel a little bit small, but some folks like travel trailers with no slides and no problems. Now in this one, we have a nice comfy couch right up front here. You've got an end table on each side of the couch and on top of each end table, there is a receptacle and USB ports that are available for you as well. Down below this couch, you'll notice that there's storage under here as well. And there are a couple of cargo nets that hold everything in place. There's also storage underneath of this end table with a shelf built into the center. So you've got some storage on this side and the TV location is just above on the right hand side and it's on a swivel arm so you can pull it out, swivel it around, maybe be able to lay in bed and comfortably be able to watch TV. So one thing to note here is on each side of the bed location, there are these wardrobe cabinets and these are lighted. So that's a kind of a cool feature. There's a little light switch here, but it's kind of nice to be able to see inside your cabinet. There's a bar up top so you can hang your garments, but there's a lot of storage down below. Probably goes about that deep. So you can hang your garments and still have storage underneath of them inside of this cabinet. Now to also one thing to note is that there's a top to each one of these cabinets. So you could store things up there while you're camping, but you certainly couldn't store anything up there while you're driving down the road. It would just fall off, I think. Now to open up the Murphy bed, it's a pretty simple process. You just jackknife your sofa out, pull this D-ring over, and this platform just pulls right down. And then your bed comes right down on top of that. Now you'll notice here, there's a nice big window up front and you can use either a regular screen or a room darkening screen so you can sleep at night. And there's also cubbies on each side with a shelf above so you double your storage capacity there. There are no USBs or receptacles back there but they're right up front here on each side of the end table anyway. One other thing to note about this kind of setup is that the fold in the mattress is pretty high up on the bed. So some folks might not like that so much. So just something to be aware of if you're sensitive to that type of a mattress when you're sleeping. So we were off camera for a second and Susan brought up a great point and that is, you certainly would have to leave the mattress the way it is to be able to fold it up and put it in place. But when you get to where you're going, you can easily grab the mattress turn it around the other way and then the fold will be at the bottom end of the bed instead of the top and that would make sleeping much more comfortable. She is full of great ideas. We have to get her doing more of these tours by herself. <laughs> anyway, the bed itself, let's give it a quick measure, um, comes in at 78 inches by 60 inches. So it's like two inches shy of a residential size queen bed, but still it's a pretty good size bed. So here we are at the kitchen location here. And this style of kitchen is what we would call an inline kitchen. Everything's right in one line. Up above here, you've got these two nice big cabinet doors that open up and stay in place. Plenty of storage space up top. Have your attention please, the Maryland RV show is now open. <laughs> Maryland RV show is now open. <laughs> Down below that, you have your cooktop with a two burner stove right here and the lid flips up and down, which creates uh, some usable countertop space for you. Then they have a really, really good size, big round single bowl sink here, nice and deep. You'd be able to very easily wash big pots and pans in there with no problem. Down below that, you'll notice you've got a receptacle here to be able to plug things in in case you want to set up a coffee pot or a toaster in the morning. And then below that, a little bit of storage under the sink. I really like this lighted spice rack here. Very convenient location right underneath where you might be cooking. And then of course, you have your microwave down below. Which is a convection, right? This is a convection style microwave down below. And you can sweep up inside your camper and sweep all your crumbs away with the central vac. So here we are at the refrigerator and freezer in here, and it's a nice big fridge and freezer setup. Very deep, plenty of room inside of here. Um, this is a 
12 volt refrigerator so it runs off of battery or shore power. Now the Nobos are set up to be able to go off road and do some boondocking. This particular camper comes with 190 watts of solar, a 2000 watt inverter, and we get questions all the time from people about, hey, can I use my 110 watt receptacles in my RV while I'm on solar or battery power? Many RVs, you can't. It's just not wired that way. But in this RV, they've wired the electrical receptacles in here so they will run off your battery. So if you're out boondocking, you have that convenience as well. It's a very nice setup. Just past the refrigerator, you have a very large pantry cabinet here. This actually has a mirror door on it, so I guess you can check yourself out before you go hit the hiking trails in the morning. So here I am at the dinette table, and to be honest, this, you know, this dinette can only really sit two people, and you can sleep five people inside of this camper. So like I mentioned earlier, since this doesn't have any slide outs, one of the trade-offs for that convenience of not having to maintain or deal with any problems that a slide out might cause is your dinette gets a little bit squished. And that certainly is the case here. But for two people to sit here comfortably, hey, it's big enough for that for sure. Now this table will also drop down and create another bed. And if you were to do that, this bed is about uh, 70 inches long and about 30 inches wide. So I would say a kid would be able to sleep here pretty comfortably. I like the nice big window over top. And I also like the fact that the dinette on this camper is on the camp side. What I mean by that is this is where your camping is all going to be set up, right? Because your door's on that side. So if you're sitting here, you'll have a nice view of your picnic table, fire pit, your chairs are all out there. It's just a great set up to have your dinette on this side of the RV. Now you'll also notice there's three big storage cabinets overhead. It's really one big cabinet here. So you'll wanna be able to use bins or something like that for all of your storage so things don't go flying around in your cabinets while you're driving up and down the road. All of your controls are mounted up here as well. And there are a couple of lights here and there's a receptacle mounted up under here on the one end. So if you're sitting here at your dinette table, You've got your computer open or whatever, you could easily plug it in and stay powered up. Now there's a little bit more storage underneath of this one dinette booth on this side, uh, but not on the other side. Now here we are at the double double bunks in the back of this camper. And I say they're double doubles because they're double wide bunks. Now this bunk measures at about 74 inches by 44 inches. Uh, they don't have a sticker anywhere in here that mentions how much these bunks can hold. Normally, they'll hold anywhere between 250 and 300 pounds. I would imagine these are the same. You could look it up on the manufacturer's website. We have no cell signal here at the Maryland RV show, so I can't use my phone to find out what the specs are. Very often, they don't even list them on the manufacturer's websites anyway, so it's kind of hard to tell. But I will point out that with these double bunks, they have three out of four of the main features we look for in bunk beds. First of all, they each have their own window, they each have their own light, and they each have their own set of USB ports. They do not have a receptacle, but that's okay, I think, as long as you've got the USBs, the kids can sit up here, have their tablets, their phones charging while they're, while they're laying and getting ready to go to sleep at night. There's also storage underneath one side of the bottom bunk, but these bunks are set up in a very unusual way to greatly enhance the storage inside this camper. And we'll show you that feature when we work our way outside. Now, here I am inside the bathroom, which is all the way in the back of this camper, right next to the bunks next door. I'm standing in the shower. And I always do this because in a camper, the shower is always raised up off of the floor to allow the drain to be able to work properly. That's why I always measure the ceiling height inside the shower because you're not standing on the floor. You're standing up about, in this case, about six or seven inches off the floor. And that's why you'll see the manufacturers also install skylights in the shower. It's to give you additional headspace because you're not standing on the floor below. Now the headroom in here from the shower floor into the skylight is about six feet, four inches, where the total headroom just anywhere else in the camper would be about 
six feet seven inches so if you're taller than six four you might have to crouch down in here a bit but that should be tall enough for most people i would think now this shower feels like it's a pretty decent size it's got a couple or a few corner shelves for your shampoo and soap and then of course it's got a separate sprayer that pulls off that you can use now they do kind of have a shower curtain in here but it's on a track so that definitely helps to keep the curtain in control so it doesn't blow in and stick to you and the track itself curves out and into the room so it creates a little more room for you inside the shower now Susan's standing in the shower and I'm standing near the doorway to the bathroom and you'll notice that you've got a nice medicine cabinet over top with a sh shelf built in and then a little bit of open storage down below. There's also, you know, a little bit of countertop space with a decent sized sink. There is a receptacle off to the side here for your blow dryer or shaver. And then you've got open storage and cabinet storage below the sink. Here I am sitting on the commode, and even with the door closed, this bathroom passes the elbow test with flying colors. Now, as we all know, in a small travel trailer, or any travel trailer for that matter, storage space is usually not sufficient. Uh, but in this particular camper, they came up with some creative ideas to help out with that situation. And what they did is they installed a good-sized door here. And this goes into the bunk area where we just were. And inside here, this bottom bunk folds up and out of the way it'll latch into place and then you've got this nice big door to put all your camping supplies in here you could put chairs grills you could probably even squeeze a bike in here no problem you've got all this additional storage to make your camping really really convenient this travel trailer is the ember rv touring edition model number 26 mrb it has an unloaded vehicle weight of 6,915 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,310 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 8,225 pounds. The hitch weight is 865 pounds. It measures in at 31 feet, 11 inches, and it can sleep up to four people. When you first walk into this camper on the left-hand side is where the rear bathroom is located. And then as you make your way through the camper, you've got your theater seating and entertainment area, and then you move into your dinette and kitchen area. And in the very front of this trailer is where a private bedroom is located. So here I am entering this trailer from the back end of the trailer. Susan is standing in the front in the front bedroom. And my first impression when I walk in is I can't help but notice to my left, this is where the bathroom's located. It is gigantic. One of the best bathrooms I've ever seen, but we'll take a look at that at the end of the tour. We always start in the living area first. But the first thing you'll notice is on my right hand side, there's a really nice size pantry closet area. This has a light built into it that's on a motion sensor, which is really, really terrific. Or you can set it so that you turn it on and off however you would like. Um, and then you've also got your circuit breakers all located in here. Now I've talked about circuit breakers before in some other videos and the fuses that are located in a trailer is sort of their circuit breaker system. So there's just like in your car, there's a fuse that goes to the radio. There's a fuse that goes to the dash lights. There's fuses for everything. You can buy those same automotive fuses and I recommend you do buy a multi-pack of them, different um, amps. amps, I guess it would be. 15, 20, 50, 30, 5, 10, buy a multi-pack of them. And then if one of your fuses blows, you just pop a new one in. It's very, very simple and they're very handy to keep on hand. Also located right next to the pantry closet is all of your controls. Now this control panel is really cool because it's got a motion sensor. So when you get in front of it, it lights up automatically, which is a great feature, especially at nighttime. Another really great feature in here is that all the lights on the ceiling are dimmable. Here's your little dimmer switch right here and you just lower them on down. Now, right across from the main entrance into the camper, this is where like the living room or entertainment area is located. Now, in this camper, they are showing these movie theater style seats, but you can also get it with a tri-fold sofa here so you can fold out the sofa and create another sleeping area. With the movie theater sleeping though, there's a couple of cup holders in the middle and then this little armrest raises up so you can hide your remote controls in there. And then it's got some manual reclining feature to it so you can sort of 
recline back. These are really nice and comfortable, by the way. I think they're very well made, and I like them a lot, actually. They're, they're more comfortable than ours, I think. <laughs> now, you'll notice behind me here, there's a really nice size window. There's another one on the side. And this whole entire sofa area and dinette is in a very large slide out. So this whole side of the camper slides on out and it just gives you a lot of floor space in here. So it feels very, very roomy and spacious. Now, just behind me here, I pointed out the large window and they've got these awesome screens that are in here. You can use the screen feature or you can use the privacy shade feature to black out all the light. Now, just above me here, you'll notice that there is a long bank of cabinets that go all the way across over top of the dinette. So these are a series of cabinet doors that open up, but the whole entire thing is open from one end to the other. So if you have some longer items and you get them in there at the right angle, you can use the space very, very efficiently. Now, we have a similar setup in our Class A RV over top of our dinette too. And Susan uses a uh, clear totes to store all of our items in so we can see what's in the totes, but it keeps things from sliding all over the place while we're traveling on down the road. And we recommend maybe you try the same sort of setup yourself. Now, directly across from the theater seating is where the entertainment center is located. Now, you'll notice down here at the bottom, it's got a really nice electric fireplace. This will blow heat out into the RV. Most electric fireplaces do. We have one in our RV as well, and it works great. It keeps the whole coach warm on those chilly mornings, so Susan and I stay nice and toasty. Now, just above the fireplace, you've got a space for some open storage here. And then you've got your TV location, which is really in a great spot. You can see it from the theater seating perfectly. You can also see it from the dinette, but it's also on an, a swing arm, so you can pull it out and swivel the TV however you would like. Then just above the TV is a decent sized storage cabinet. It's a little bit on the shallow side, but remember the big pantry cabinets behind here. So that's why this is a little on the shallow side, but this is great for storing DVDs or CDs or whatever you might want to keep in here. Now, just past the entertainment center is where the kitchen begins. Now, this type of kitchen is what we call an L-shaped kitchen. And all that means is all of your appliances and everything are set up in the shape of an L. One of the biggest advantages of an L-shaped kitchen is this area in the corner where you get all this extra countertop space. But starting from the refrigerator end, this is a very nice size refrigerator. Now this is a 12 volt refrigerator, which means it runs on battery or shore power and it has a compressor in it rather than those fins that you see in some of the refrigerators that are out there that are more of an evaporation style refrigerator. These are a huge advantage because they cool much faster and they're also very, very efficient and they're bigger inside so you can store more stuff. This is a huge freezer and a huge refrigerator space for this trailer so I really like that a lot. Now down below the refrigerator, there is a nice big drawer down here for pots and pans or whatever you would like to store in there. And then right next to that, we have a range. Now this includes a three burner stove. And then down below that, it also has a real oven in here. For, so for those of you folks like me that like to cook a pizza every now and then, there you go, it couldn't get any better. And then below that, it has another drawer down below for pots and pan storage. Now up above here, we have a microwave oven. It's a little bit on the small side, but it's really perfect for this size of a camper. You can easily get, you know, a plate size in there and microwave whatever you have. Now they've done a nice job in here with this subway tile backsplash. I really like that quite a bit. One thing you'll notice, however, is that it does not cover the side wall of the cabinetry next to your stove. So if you're cooking here, and anything were to splatter on the cabinet, you know, it might hurt the finish on your cabinet here. So you probably want to put something here. Maybe a cutting board could store here, something along those lines that would allow you to protect your cabinet space. Now, next to the microwave up top, you've got a nice big corner cabinet in here with tons of storage. And then another cabinet over top of the kitchen sink with more storage as well. And then of course, we've got a really nice size double sink, two huge rectangular bowls 
nice big gooseneck faucet. This is really a great sink setup. And then you'll notice you've got a receptacle over top of the countertop space so you could set up your toaster oven, coffee pot, a regular toaster, whatever you need. And it's really a great amount of space in here. And if it's not enough countertop space for you, there's even an extendable countertop space right here. And the great thing about this is it doesn't block anything. So many extendable countertop spaces we see actually block a doorway. They may even block the entry door in and out of the RV, but this one's in a perfect spot and it has another receptacle over top of it as well. So you wouldn't have to run a cord behind your kitchen sink. So very well placed, very well thought out. Down below your kitchen sink, there's a very large amount of storage space down there. And then of course you have a bank of four drawers for all of your kitchen utensils. So here I am at the dinette location right across from the kitchen. And I gotta tell you, the first thing that I really like about this dinette is that it doesn't have any legs. If you've ever sat in a travel trailer before that has the two posts that come down that holds the table in place, it's a real pain in the butt. Your feet hit them all the time. Your legs aren't comfortable. We have that style of dinette in our class C RV. And, um, it's really not very convenient. This is a much, much better setup. I really like it a lot. Now you can sit four people at this dinette very, very comfortably. Uh, and in addition to that, you've got a window over top of the dinette and another window behind me here. So there's four big windows in this area that you can open, get a great cross breeze through here. Very, very well done. Now down below each of the dinette seats, there is a storage door that opens. And then they have these really nice size bins that you could pull out. So it's a lot easier to access things that you store under here because you can just pull the whole bin out. Or the other option is just to remove the cushions. And there's a piece of plywood here that you can just pop right out of the way and you can access all of your storage underneath both of your dinette seats. Now this is the first time I've ever seen a dinette booth built with aluminum framing instead of wood framing. I think it's fantastic. It's very lightweight, it's very, very sturdy, and it'll last you a really long time. And finally, one last feature about the dinette is that you can lower the tabletop down and this will convert into another bed. And this measures in at about 74 inches by 40 inches. So a decent sized bed, I mean, six feet, two inches, you know, an adult could probably sleep here. Definitely two kids could sleep here very, very comfortably. There aren't many travel trailers out there that have a private bedroom, but this one does. So for you parents that want to have your own space closed off from the rest of the camper, maybe the kids are sleeping out here. They want to watch TV. You guys come in here, relax. You can watch your own TV in here before you fall off to sleep at night and you're separated from the rest of the camper, this is a terrific setup. So come on in, let's check it out. So not only would this room serve as a separate or private bedroom, but it also serves as a second living area because the couch is set up as a Murphy bed. So when the Murphy bed's up, you got a nice comfy couch in here. The TV mounts on the wall directly across from here, which is a perfect location. So you can sit in here and watch TV and the kids can sit out there and watch YouTube. Although we hope you're watching YouTube videos in here, just our YouTube videos, not gamers. But anyway, that's a whole different subject. Uh, so it is very multifunctional and you can use this room as a second living area as well, but it's primarily the owner's bedroom. And the way this works is it's a Murphy bed setup. So you just have to sort of unjackknife your sofa and then Ember's done a nice job. They have this one clip in the middle. A lot of places have a D-ring on each side. It's a little bit inconvenient and difficult to get to, but with the clip in the middle, you just snap it open, lower the bed down, extend this little bar, which helps to support the mattress when it's fully unfolded, and then you just fold it right on out. Now, a lot of folks are worried about where is the fold in the mattress. Well, I think if you're laying in bed here, you know, you'll notice that the fold is down below my hips. And so as far as this mattress, you know, hurting your lower back or things, because maybe you're sleeping on the fold. I don't think you really have to worry about that in here. I think the fold 
is low enough that you can get away with it. Now the size of this bed, I'm gonna bet it's a short queen. And it is, uh, it's about 78 inches long. So if it was just two inches longer, it would be a full size residential queen bed, but it's two inches short. So we'll call it a short queen, but it's pretty close. Now you'll notice in here as well that we have a um, wardrobe cabinet on each side of the bed. There's a pole in here up top so you can hang your garments in here. And then down below that on each side, there's also a drawer that pulls out so you can store some things in there. And then you have a nightstand on either side of the bed as well. So one other nice feature about this Murphy bed is that it does have a reading light overhead as well. There's a string of LED lights up here. You just flip on the switch and there's a dimmer control so you can brighten it up as much as you'd like or dim it down as well. Also, in each of the cubbies that are located back here, there's a little yellow light. So if it's nighttime and you need to turn a light on and you don't want to disturb your partner, this lower light, yellowish color, really helps with keeping that under control. And then in addition to that, there is a receptacle and USB ports on both cubbies as well. Now, just above the Murphy bed, you'll also notice there are three additional storage cabinets up top. Uh, that's really just one big storage space with three doors, but you have additional storage there. And then Ember does a great job adding this, I guess I'll call it a skylight in here. You can open this window up or you can pull your shade down if you just want to block a little bit of sunlight or you can pull your blackout shade up for when you're sleeping at night. Just very, very well done and thought out. Now, across from where your bed and couch are located is where your TV would mount on the wall here. And you could put a really decent size TV in here. That is for sure. Now you've got your receptacle, cable outlets, and even an antenna that's all here for you to hook into. And then you've got a mirrored door here. So you have a nice big view of yourself when you're getting ready in the morning. Behind this door, you have uh, some storage area up top. And then this would be more of like a coat closet where you can hang a couple of jackets or maybe some baseball caps or things like that. And then down below, you've got fully extendable drawers for even more storage in here. And then I'm sure you're already noticing there's a door right behind me. And so the bedroom or extra living area also has its own entry and exit. So here I am all the way at the back of the travel trailer now and I'm in the bathroom, which spans the whole entire width of this trailer. It's one of the biggest bathrooms I've ever seen in a travel trailer. It's really fantastic. Now, I'm standing in the shower like I usually am, and for you taller folks, the height inside the shower is, gosh, 80 inches in here. So, you know, that's a lot of height for some of you guys. What's that, six feet, eight inches inside the skylight. And then the regular ceiling height in the entire RV is 82 inches tall. And so, uh, gosh, that's quite a bit of height in here. That's six feet, eight inches of height, regular ceiling height throughout the trailer. So really fantastic. Now inside the shower, it's got a removable shower head and sprayer, and then it's got a retractable shower door, which is great. I love these things. They take up very little space. You just close them up way better than a shower curtain and uh, they just work really, really well. They also have a nice liner or, you know, surround inside the shower area. They actually took the subway tile and turned it up. So it's a different look, but I like it. It looks very nice and chic in here. Now, the rest of the bathroom is incredibly large. You've got this gigantic countertop and vanity area with a good size vanity sink. Up above, you'll notice these really two medicine cabinet doors, and they have just done a really great job with the lighting in here. They have lighting over top of the cabinet and also underneath. It just presents really well. It looks very nice and luxurious. Uh, and then you've got these gigantic doors to open. The, I mean, these cabinets are a foot deep, so there's just a ton of storage in here. Now down below, there's also a couple of doors here, and you've got some storage underneath of here. But it's funny, there's nothing here but we'll go outside and take a look at that and I'll show you why when we get outside. Now, just outside the shower, there is a lot of open storage here that's the whole entire depth of the shower. These shelves are 
32 inches deep. So you can get a lot of storage into that area. There's also a towel hook on each side of the shower that's very well done and well placed. And then finally, the commode itself. I mean, you're sitting in here, you're gonna pass the elbow test every time. Now here we are outside the camper and we're also at the back of the camper. And this is what is located underneath of the vanity inside and it's a little outdoor kitchen. So you've got a nice griddle here that's all set up with propane. And then you've got a refrigerator next to that. And this little mini fridge is nice because it's got a little spot for ice cubes. As you can see in the very front of the travel trailer, there is a huge pass through storage area. And it's lighted. And it's lighted too. I know that's pretty cool. And it's got this heavy duty rubber floor in here too. So uh, very well done. Let us know which one of these travel trailers with Murphy beds you like the most and why in the comments down below. We look forward to reading and seeing what you think about each one of these trailers. And guess what? The manufacturers read through our comments as well so they can learn from all your likes and dislikes and design better campers for all of us down the road. But if you'd like to see some more campers with Murphy beds, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.